Ladies and gentlemen, this is William Tincup. I am currently the president of Recruiting Daily. Uh, I've been in the industry for, I think, about a thousand years. Uh, you might or might not have met me or heard some of the things or read some of the things that I've written, uh, but I'm super, super excited to be here today uh, talking about um, talent under 30. I refuse to use the word millennials because I just think it it, uh, it carries too much stereotypes with it. So I won't use the word millennials. I'm just going to say talent under 30. And I've got some interesting slides and things that I'd like to show you. And so, well, without any further ado, let's kind of get right into it. All righty. So one of the things you have to ask yourself, are you having difficulty recruiting people under 30. So look at your talent pipeline. Everybody's got a pipeline. Everybody kind of organizes their talent pipeline in many different ways. It's kind of like the sales pipeline. You know, everything that kind of marketing does to, to create sales, it goes through one screen and another screen. And, and the idea is that it goes further and further and further. And you get to a point where you like uh, a group of people and then maybe you take them deeper in the interview process uh, and extend to officer office off offers and then you know you hire somebody right it's been been going on for a thousand years um well talent under 30 doesn't behave exactly um like this um they do several things i can't wait to show you some of the things that they do but they do several things differently than generations before them okay and so Keep this in the back of your mind about talent under 30 and your own unique pipeline, the way that you organize uh, your pipeline for talent. All right, so I'll, uh, I'll say something obvious, but I think it's, 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 it's important to talk about. Uh, talent under 30 behaves differently. Um, and I'm sure the greatest generation said this about boomers. I'm sure boomers said this about Generation X and why, and millennials, and whatever else. They behave differently. Well, they, you know, life's different. Technology's different. Uh, the world is different. Um, my 11-year-old and 7-year-old, um, both those boys are growing up uh, with screen time. You know, yeah, they're reading books, but predominantly they're learning how to operate computers very, very, very early, whereas maybe myself, I might not have even interacted with a computer until I was, uh, you know, 20 years old. So, shocking. Things are different. <laughs> News at 11, uh, if you will. But they behave differently is something I definitely want to put in the back of your minds. Okay? All right. So, candidates today ask different questions. And as a part of your candidate experience and your employee experience, it used to be really simple. We had talent acquisition that would stop, if you will, at the line of demarcation of onboarding. And then onboarding would lead into other performance-related things, uh, learning and compensation and talent, uh, training and development and rewards and recognition. Well, today, candidates are asking questions of recruiters and hiring managers um, that are far... Uh, further up in the process um, than what we've traditionally had to deal with. And why that's important is your recruiters haven't really been skilled in the answering of these questions for your firm. And we're losing talent uh, out the back of this because they can't answer the questions. So we have to understand this uh, group of people, talent under 30, is asking different questions, okay? And I'm going to get into three questions in particular um, that I want you to really, really think about and your team to really think about and kind of study and, and prepare. But I want you to know that this group of talent, they behave differently. Uh, they laugh at your funnel. <laughs> and they ask questions that you're not necessarily prepared for. Okay? All right. So something else to add to uh, this, they expect different things from you and your hiring managers. So along with the questions that they're asking, um, they're also uh, very concerned with the environment in which they work. So years ago, a best place to work was uh, better uh, 
uh, or market rate of compensation, better or market rate of comp uh, benefits, and better or market rate of an environment. But the definition of environment, which is very important here, has changed. And this is what I want you to think about. Um, it is not uncommon for people to want to do yoga at the office. It is not uncommon uh, for people under 30 to want desks that don't just sit flat but that raise with them. It is not uncommon uh, that people want a pet-friendly environment. And these aren't things just like you hear about in Silicon Valley. This is happening in Dallas, Texas. Talent comes to the table and says, yeah, I want, I want to know what's your plan. And again, they're asking in the interview process. They're asking um, recruiters and hiring managers about these things, which, again, normally these are things that we would have probably dealt with later on down the road. Oh, you want to be fret pet friendly? Well, let's, you know, let's figure that out. What does that mean? Do you have a cat or a turtle or you know, a couple of worms or what do you want to do? Now, they're not even willing to go into the hiring process unless these questions and, uh, and they have satisfactory answers to these questions. Okay, so let's just let's just face it. The game has changed. Absolutely changed in talent acquisition and talent acquisition has a direct link and correlation uh, to both the employee experience and also to the retention of top talent. Most of HR believes that 80% of the value comes from 20% of the workforce. And these, this talent under 30, they're not willing to work with you or work for you if you can't satisfy some of their, what they perceive, basic needs. Like Maslow's hierarchy of needs for people under 30 has changed. Okay? So the, the screen that you're looking at right now, the... the they're both playing football, right? American football. They're both playing. Uh, one's in the 1920s, and, and one, you know, was a, a year ago. And so, but still playing football, the game has changed, though, fundamentally changed. And now let's get into some real examples of that change, okay? Boom. Candidates under 30, talent under 30, they don't want your call. They don't want a voicemail. They, they don't want a letter. They don't want smoke signals. They want you to text them. It's okay to text them. Preferred that you text them. And um, in some ways, they respond negatively to people that can't or won't text them. So this is kind of an easy dialogue that you see in front of you of a recruiter. Hey, got a gig. Really would like for you to see it. Is it okay? Cool. Great. Looks good. Now what? And then you can kind of get into some of your more traditional parts of recruiting. But that beginning phase, again, that beginning phase doesn't start with John dialing for dollars uh, or Betty sending out a thousand emails but that's, those days are dead for talent under 30. It's text. That's it. That's the game. So that's one thing that we need to make sure that our recruiters and hiring managers understand. They fundamentally understand that the game has changed and that texting has to be the communication method of, uh, or they're going to lose talent. All right. Now I want to get you into three specific questions that get asked by candidates in the interview, okay? This isn't six weeks into the job, <laughs> a year on the job. This is during the interview, what's next, okay? So let that, let that settle in uh, for those of you that are in your 30s, 40s, 50s, etc. Let that settle in. Would you have ever asked in an interview, maybe a first interview, uh, would you have ever asked what's next? Most of you are shaking your head. No, no, it'd be it'd be uh, it would be considered rude 
uh, it would be considered uh, in, inconsiderate about what's next. Okay, so the, the hard part of this question and why recruiters and HR have to do a better job of working together in an employee experience is this is an internal mobility question at its core. Okay, uh, turns out we're not great at internal mobility. Um, okay, we've got to get great at internal mobility or we won't be able to recruit the talent and we won't be able to retain the talent, both sides. So we won't even be able to get them. And if we do, on, on the off chance that we do get them, we won't be able to keep them because we don't have a plan for their internal mobility. Okay, this is changing recruiting uh, in a massive way because recruiters have never had to answer this question. They've never had to answer what's next at all. Like, what's next? Well, you fill out the paperwork, you do this, you get keys, we'll teach you how to use the computer. Like, that's what's next. What, what candidates are asking in the what's next is after 9, 18 months of me doing something really well, succeeding at this job, what are you going to give me? What are you going to put me next? Okay. So huge question has ramifications all the way, ripples all the way through recruiting, hiring managers, and HR. Okay. That is a question to study with your department. Second, how are you going to develop my skills? Okay. This is being asked. In the interview, in the interview process, okay. I'm coming to you. Uh, I understand my basic skills. I understand where I'm basically good, not good. What are you, company? What are you going to do to make me better? And if you can't answer that question, you're dead on arrival. Okay, your hiring managers and recruiters, if they can't ask answer this question, dead on arrival. You won't be able to recruit the talent. They'll move on to somebody that can answer the question. Okay, so again, training, development, learning, uh, these are things that we've traditionally thought of after the hire. Uh, people have been on, and uh, maybe a couple months months into their tenure. Um, then we start kind of figuring out kind of a learning plan, a development plan, etc. They don't they don't want to wait. They don't want to wait six months, nine months, a year into the gig for you to figure out how that you are going to develop their skills. If you can't develop their skills, you're losing talent. And I think now this is I'm talking primarily about the recruiting side, the front end, but I I, I would also uh, I'd want you to know that this is also directly linked to top talent. If you're not developing their skills, giving them uh, different things to work on, different promotions, international projects, uh, etc., then you're going to lose that talent too. Okay, they work both ways. You're not going to be able to recruit them, and you, and you won't be able to retain them. Got to have a great plan on how you're going to develop the skills of the candidates coming in the front door. Okay. This is a yet an end. Work with your team, study it, see what you can do to be able to make bulletproof answers when these questions get asked. Third question, it's a very important question uh, to people under 30, is how are you going to recognize me? How are you going to praise me? Okay, how are you going to identify, because I know I'm great. I know I'm uh, a high performer, if you will. I know that I'm going to come in and kill it and do really, really well. What I want to know in the interview process is how you're going to recognize me, how you're going to praise me, how you're going to notice that I'm doing a great job and then tell others, okay? That total recognition, uh, rewards and recognition, it's called a lot of different things in organizations. Um, again, we we. We've never dealt with recognition and praise in the talent acquisition process. Okay, this has always been after the hire. But candidates under 30, they're coming to you asking this question. What is your plan to recognize my greatness? 
I know I'm great. Other people that are going to interact with me, that are going to, they're going to know I'm great. You're probably going to know I'm great. But what are you going to do? Is it money? Is it perks? Is it days off? Is it PTO? Is it travel around the world? What are you going to do? They're asking questions that you can't fake your way through or, dare I say, lie your way through. You've got to have a plan, okay, a praise plan, a recognition plan. And if you don't have one, poof, they're gone. They will not apply. They'll just bail out of your process and go somewhere else to where they go to, and I'm using air quotes, someone that gets it. Because they perceive if you can't answer these three basic questions, you're not a company that gets it. Okay? Okay, now let's go to what does their job search look like? Like how do they, how do they look for jobs and what do they do in the process? The first thing they do is they usually get recommended uh, a gig through somebody that they know. Um, and that could be through the career management center. It could be a buddy that they, you know, play intramural softball with, etc. whatever. Uh, but it's usually somebody says, hey, you should, you should take a look at this job with Apple. And I'm just using Apple as an example. It could be any company. The first thing they do in their job search is they go and Google what's it like to work at Google or Apple. And they'll go through about 10 pages of Google looking for everything that they can possibly learn about what it's really like to work at Apple. Okay? Not what Apple says it's, you know, what it's like, but what other people say it's like to work at Apple. They want to know the real story. Okay? They want to know the good, the bad, the ugly. They want to know it all. All right, so after Google, the second thing they do is they go to Glassdoor, okay? So they look you up on Glassdoor. They look up the company, and they want to know the CEO, and they want to look at the reviews. And here's the thing about reviews on Glassdoor that's not talked about. If your reviews are 100% positive, candidates under 30 don't believe you. If your reviews are 100% negative, candidates under 30 don't believe that. They want to see a mixture of good reviews and bad reviews. They want to see that 80, 20, 70, 30 uh, mixture of some good reviews, a majority of good reviews, and they also want to see some things that, you know, didn't didn't work out, weren't great experiences. And they that that increases the believability of what's going on behind the veil at Apple or any company in this, in this, for instance. Okay? Google, Glassdoor. Boom, boom. Third, and this is going to shock you. They go to LinkedIn. Okay? And in LinkedIn, you can look up former employees, as you probably already well know. But you can go in and look at former employees of companies. And what they do is, carrots under 30, they go and look at former employees of Apple, in this instance, and they go and reach out to them and get the straight dope. What's, what was it like? Why'd you leave? You know, uh, They ask questions that you um, legally can't ask or answer in a traditional reference check. Okay, they're, they're bypassing the reference check. They're going to your former employees, not current employees, because current employees are going to they're going to tote the, you know, they're going to tote the line. They're going to say everything's fantastic, uh, and it's expected that they would say everything's fantastic. But your former employees, that part of your employer brand where you've either managed it and cultivated uh, it really well, or you haven't, that group of people is going to tell them the truth. Okay, I liked it. My boss was terrible. I traveled too much. Uh, the pay wasn't great. We didn't get discounts like I thought we would. But, you know, whatever. They're going to tell them the truth. Okay, or their version of the truth. It's important to say. Okay, Google, boom. Glassdoor, boom. LinkedIn former employees, boom. Okay, and it's important to note that this is all before they apply. Okay, let that sink in. This is all before they even hit the application button. They're, um, in, in the words of, of people under 30, they're stalking you. 
and they're going to stalk you till they feel comfortable applying, which again is not something that generations before or people that are older would have ever done or considered. Okay, so they uh, in that process they find some stuff in Google that's bad, they bail. Glassdoor finds some stuff that's really terrible, uh, they bail. Uh, they talk to some former employees, find out some really dirty stories, they bail. Okay, but let's say you make it through the gauntlet and they make it to the application phase. At this point, they've convinced themselves, this is a cool company. This is a good company. It's a good gig. Um, and, uh, you know, I should give it a shot. I'll apply. Okay? So the, the, the things that happen before the application process is also things that you should consider. What what is our you know what's our presence on Google look like? What's our presence on Glassdoor look like? Uh, how can we manage our alumni network, our former employees, in a much more uh, sophisticated way? Uh, what can we do there? So these are these are things that you should talk to your team about um, and see what you can do to make these things better. Okay, uh, or and uh, and this is really the heart of this matter. And I really want you to think about this, okay? I really would like for you to just spend, you know, two, three minutes thinking about this particular thing. We know the game's changed. Pretty much everybody knows that this game has changed. How much talent have we lost out the front door, and dare I say even the back door, because we're not playing the game the way they want us to play the game, Okay. How, how much talent has not applied, has not uh, even considered joining our team because we're just not playing in the way that they want us to play. Um, so without any further ado, I'd like to get you to think about these things, okay? I want you to go back, think about the questions that they're asking, thinking about the way that they're uh, doing their job search. Think about the way that they want texting and communication and talk with your team Build up your plans, get good at this, and get good at the new game. And thank you again, William Tincup. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, I'm on the internet, and I'm relatively easy to find. Thank you.